Hi guys, this is Charles and I'm one of the surgeons at Southpaws. Uh, today we are doing a nasal planectomy in a dog with a nasal squamous cell carcinoma. So the tumor is just inside the nasal cavity right here. You can probably see the little tip of it right there and it extends back probably about two and a half centimeters back to about here. So we're going to go all the way back to the junction with the dorsal nasal bone. First thing I'm going to do is a uh, mepivacaine nerve block. So I'm going to inject into the infraorbital nerve, which is going to be coming through the infraorbital frame and on both sides. So I'll show you how to do that first. So I'm going to palpate the infraorbital foramen on either side. So that's just sitting right here. And I'm going to just advance the needle into the infraorbital foramen and then retract or aspirate to make sure that there's no, um, that I'm not in the artery. And I've injected about two mils in that side. And I'm palpating the infraorbital foramen on the other side, going in with the Going in with the, uh, the needle, aspirating, and injecting another couple of mils. And that's going to provide really good pain relief for uh, starting at about a half an hour, lasts about four to six hours. So now, just looking back here so you guys can see the tumor right there, just inside the nasal plenum. So I think you'd be able to see that right there. Um, and so again, I'm going to go all the way back to the junction or the end of the nasal, uh, dorsal nasal bone. And because it's in the lumen, I don't have to go all the way down to the lip margin, so I'll be able to just come down here to the end of the, or the ventral most aspect of the nasal planum, the keratinized epithelium down there. And then we're going to come around and make an ellipse back out to here. So functionally, this dog will be great. Cosmetically, it is going to look a little bit different, but... Um, I find that uh, owners usually get used to that pretty quickly. So I'm just going circumferentially around the outside like this, and then I'll meet here in the middle, just like that. And then coming around with electric cautery. Can I get Cauter turned up please to 40? Can I get it up to 50? And then the way that I am going to um, close this is that I'm actually going to anchor the uh, skin to the cartilage. Using sutures, and I may drill some holes in the nasal bone in order to anchor the sutures. Coming through here. So I just cut through the rostral most extent of the infraorbital nerve. I'll try not to get into your way too much here. Getting a little bit of movement here, so you might have to get to the aesthetic, please. And I'm being a little bit more aggressive on the right side, which is where the tumor is located, than on the left side. So, um, just a question about what the reason for the, uh, the, the surgery is that he's got a nasal squamous cell carcinoma just inside his nasal cavity right in there you can actually see the pink right i'm not sure if i can position that so you can see it it's just sitting right there so you can get the little tip of it and it extends back about two and a half centimeters back to here um, it's a samoid and samoids are predisposed to getting nasal squamous cell carcinomas like this so still getting some twitching here um, 
if you're really worried about bleeding, you could possibly do um, uh, bilateral carotid artery ligation temporarily. Um, but I don't think we're going to have that big an issue with this. And then just coming around the side with my blade a little bit deeper. If you just go slowly all the way around and then just ligate your bleeders as you get to them, um, you shouldn't have a big problem with hemorrhage. Nasal planum is one of the areas that has the most robust blood supplies of the whole body. Can you just retract on that for me, please? Let us know if our heads are in the way. So here we've nearly amputated the nasal planum and it's still bleeding. Question. Uh, yep, I already answered that. The tumor is unilateral, but because of the the way the anatomy works, you can't actually remove just one uh, one nares. They are so intimately attached or associated with each other that um, you really have to take out both. Connect, reconnecting our pulse oximetry. This section there for me, please. Switch sides with you, please. 
And he's got a bowl underneath the dog, but I think it's fallen off to the side a little bit. So symptoms were nasal bleeding, so epistaxis, and sneezing violently. And when the referring veterinarian did a biopsy, which confirmed the presence of a, a carcinoma in the nose, didn't specifically say that it was a squamous cell carcinoma, but given the, the appearance and the history and the, the breed of dog, that is certainly the most likely. All right, so switch sides again, please. All right, so we've completed the nasal planectomy. All right. I'm just going to have a look in the nasal passage right here to make sure that it looks like we got the whole thing out. All right, so that's the nasal cavity on the contralateral side. That's the nasal septum sitting right there. Dorsal nasal meatus, the middle and the ventral, is down here. Um, so that looks really good to me. Um, and then we don't have a lot of bleeding. I'm going to look over here at our nasal cavity here. So if we look inside, you can see the tumor, can you see that? Sitting right in there, so just right in there is the beginning of the tumor. And then we'll turn over to the other side and see where the tumor ends. Can you open it, pull that open to your, the middle, the septum, pull it over to your side. So I can see tumor up to about three or four millimeters from where we stopped or from where we cut it off. So I may go ahead and just have a look and see if I can remove any more easily. I can take more of the septum out there. What is the closing process going to be like? Uh, so patient's grasshopper. Um, Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the skin to the cartilage. I don't think I'm going to put in any. I don't think I'm going to put in any holes in the in the dorsal nasal bone. some pressure on there for a minute. Um, so uh, we did get a CT scan, but the CT was basically normal. There was just a little bit of soft tissue in contrast uptake right near the um, opening of the nasal uh, passage. Uh, so that was really all we could see on the CT scan. And the CT scan of the lungs was normal. So... All right, so I'll go ahead and start my closure now. Can I get some, maybe some 2 PDS? I've already, I've already injected in the uh, info a little now. Sure.
All right, so I'm just going to do some in, uh, simple interrupted sutures up here. Uh, no, all good. And so, again, these dogs do look a little different cosmetically when we're finished, but owners tend to get used to it and uh, they don't look, you know, horribly disfigured. They just look a little bit different. I think I am going to have to uh, drill some holes. Can I get a wire driver, please? Thank you. Yeah. If we can find that extra bit that I took out, that extra nasal plane, and we'll submit that separately yeah. as another margin. Because if that's clear, then it doesn't really matter how close the tumors are. Yeah. And I've seen nasal squamous cell carcinoma very frequently in this location. I've probably treated two dozen cases, something like that, with a similar surgery. By pulling the turbinates laterally, you really open up the airway. Now that two or three, two. Just cut it right in. Both sides right below the knot. Yep. All right, so I'm going to use a pin okay. to make a hole in the bone here. Hopefully I'll be able to find my hole. Lucky shot. <laughs> So if we get dirty margins, the best thing to do would be radiation therapy. If uh, radiation therapy wasn't available, you could try um, electric chemotherapy. If electric chemotherapy wasn't available, then my next bet would be metronomic chemotherapy. So metronomic being peroxicam and cyclophosphamide. Uh, you could recut, although recutting in this area, you'd be getting into a pretty significant or pretty substantial uh, premaxillectomy. Um, so you could certainly do that, um, but you're getting into a very different cosmetic outcome. Have you already talked about how well these dogs tolerate the surgery? 
Uh, I've talked a little bit about it. Yeah, so they, these guys generally do really, really well. Um, and so it's not, you know, it's something that I would do to my own dog. Can we get some more chilo, please? Um, so there are no vessels in this area that are critical for life. And so you can sacrifice anything here and, and still get a viable outcome. It's not like you're going to get necrosis in the nose or anything. It's just that you are going to get hemorrhage during this procedure, during the surgery. And so you need to just go slowly and make sure you achieve um, hemostasis using your electric artery. Um, and then just another one, please explain why you drilled and the layers you are taking in your bites. So the reason why I drilled at that location was to anchor the suture to the underlying bone um, so that I have something to pull the skin to. Uh, and the bites that I'm taking are just, so ideally I take a, a bite through the mucosa and the cartilage and then another bite through the skin. And so you're just anchoring the skin to the nasal mucosa. But if I can't get that, then I'm going to drill a hole there to anchor that bit of suture. And another question, what post-operative care we need to take after surgery? So post-op care, we're going to be really aggressive with our pain relief. Uh, so we've already done our infraorbital nerve block. We're going to provide methadone or a fentanyl CRI after surgery. This dog will definitely get a fentanyl patch. Um, and then, I think that's kind of how I'm going to go there, just like that. Uh, so a fentanyl patch, and then after the fentanyl patch uh, runs out, then if necessary, we'll continue with codeine or something like that. And then... I would definitely use anti-inflammatories in this dog, um, from you know meloxicam or something like that. And these guys cosmetically improve a lot in the post-operative period. Um, they, uh, as uh, cosmetically. Uh, so they improve as tissue stretch and swelling comes down and that kind of thing. Um, they uh, really improve in their appearance. I always think they look like Dr. Seuss characters <laughs> after this surgery. Get rid of that suture for me, please. Thank you. And we never have issues with them eating post-surgery? No, there's no problem with, uh, with uh, eating at all. That's kind of all I can get there. So let's see if I can just try to drill a hole. Um, Uh, here maybe. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm fine. Thanks. 
I never throw instruments in surgery, but I did just drop a bunch. I elbowed my surgery pack off the table. Uh, the patient is sternal on the table. That's a good question. little buck teeth sticking out there. <laughs> so as always, um, if you're not subscribed to our channel, um, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a little ding on your phone when we're live streaming again so you can catch the, the live surgeries because I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure that people that watch them later on don't get as much out of it by not being able to ask questions of us while we're going. So I can knock down my next one if they'd like. Thank you. <laughs> Portuguese. Excellent surgery, big hugs from Brazil. You know, all great cancer sur surgeons speak Portuguese, Steph. You'll have to start studying. A little bit asymmetrical. Oops. Sorry, it keeps drifting to one side. My head in the way? Yeah. I think I'm bending my needle. No, I'm not. That's pretty much it. All right, so we're pretty much finished here. Um, what I'll do is I'll take off the drapes so you can get a better idea of what she looks like is in her whole head. She's a beautiful Samoyed. Turn the camera down here. Um, so that's what she looks like. And that will really, really improve over the next few days. I'll turn her head sideways a little bit so you can see. Okay, so almost like a polar bear. 
um, with her little lip sticking up. So, and as her fur grows back and stuff, and this skin stretches, this will drop back down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and this obviously all fills in with nice mucosa, so she should, should look pretty good. <clears throat> anyway, so that's it for me. I hopefully am going to live stream something else this afternoon. Um, so uh, the question about our prep. So we do a <clears throat> rough prep normally. Using a chlorhexidine scrub. And usually we use just chlorhexidine hand scrub brushes um, to scrub the skin out in the prep room <clears throat> after we've done our clip. And then when we come into surgery, we just use a chlorhexidine solution with alcohol um, as, a, as a surface prep. When we're working near the eyes, we usually use betadine because the chlorhexidine is extremely irritating to the um, extremely irritating to the cornea. And so we have to be really careful not to get any chlorhexidine. So when we're working on the face, we use betadine. And so that would be a betadine scrub and then betadine solution in the, uh, in the surgery theater. So thanks everybody for watching. Um, and hopefully I'll be streaming. I've got a couple of other surgeries this afternoon, um, both of which are cancer surgeries. So um, thank you, Jamshid, for your comments. And um, hope to see you guys again this afternoon. Talk to you later. Uh, one question. Do you recommend placing a tracheostomy till healing or till patient is comfortable in breathing? I do not um, use a tracheostomy at all on these dogs. This dog will be breathing certainly through its mouth straight away and probably through its nose uh, later on in the day. And sometimes we have um, to pick away a scab or a clot out of the nasal passage um, in the perioperative, or in the postoperative days, but it shouldn't have any, um, any trouble breathing. So again, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I hope to see you again this afternoon.